What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Eclectic Beard Gaming and Reactions. This go around, we're going to be taking a look at Kevin Bridges' stand up, Best of Apollo, the, economy, the Comedy Roadshow, and the Edinburgh Comedy Festival. I tried another bit that he had done. I guess Comedy Universal. Uh, I guess that's flying under the NBC um, flag. I don't know, but. Got blocked, so we'll try this one. Maybe we'll have better results. What are we going to find the like, subscribe, notification bell? Let's get to it. A double dip recession. I've got mates who've lost their job. I know people who have went beyond unemployed. I've got people in my social circle. I've got friends who I can only describe as being unemployed as fuck. <laughs> I know that's not fully utilising the English language, but that's what's being created these days. People who have just been forgotten about, people who are unemployed as fuck. They've just been forced to embrace the rock they're in. They're sat at home, they've got their routines, homes under the hammer, then it's man versus food. <laughs> they're fucking adamant they've been missold PPI. Every 15 minutes you see that advert on the phone, where's my fucking PPI in it? <laughs> I don't know what it stands for, but I would like it back. <laughs> I need that money so I can adopt a snow leopard. <laughs> I feel for them. It must be tough. Under the coalition government, I love their proposals for the job crisis. David Cameron and their guys, the work experience programmes, creating jobs for people, just like normal jobs. The only difference being you don't get paid. If you're unemployed, you get to work, but you don't get any wages, but it's to boost your self-esteem. That's how fucking condescending. That's what people need. Last Friday of the month, I'm going to go and check and see if my self-esteem's in. <laughs> Feeling a bit low. Oh, thank the Lord it's self esteem Friday. <laughs> Gonna try and pay these bills. Hi, is that British gas? Listen, mate, I'm skint, but I feel terrific. <laughs> <laughs> I'm London. Are you prepared to accept self esteem? Well, <laughs> maybe I can go on Skype and just smile at you. How's that? I don't know how it works over where y'all are at, but I know over here you got the unemployment rate. Which is, it was around four and it was around three at times, and then um, around like eight or nine at the height of the COVID stuff. However, the true unemployment rate, because they're just taking and count, they're not they're not counting the people that have actually fallen off the unemployment rolls, but still can't find jobs. More akin to like fifteen percent at one time, as high as twenty five or twenty seven percent. So yeah. I don't know if it works the same way over there, but I'm pretty sure, you know, I don't think the government's ever tried sending our people even self-esteem. You know, it's just they forget about you completely. There's no, yeah, nothing. Like, uh-uh. Like, there's not even, they're not even attempting to help you in any sort of way no job skip nothing just up oh, you're sol think <laughs> i'm london are you prepared to accept self-esteem <laughs> or maybe i can go on skype and just smile at you how's that <laughs> To stop people slipping into depression, David Cameron said about the work experience programmes. Pound stretcher. They were one of the first shops to sign up to these programmes. Working in pound stretcher for no wages. That's pretty fucking depressing. <laughs> Working in a shop where everything is worth a quid except you. About as depressing as it gets, and I know you look at these guys. Now, what the fuck would David Cameron know about being unemployed? Now, he's never been unemployed as fuck. He's never. <laughs> David Cameron's never woke up at three o'clock in the afternoon. 
<laughs> He's never had a packet of flaming hot monster munch for his breakfast. <laughs> David Cameron's never known that feeling of waking up at three in the afternoon and your only goal for the day is to try and piss a skid mark off the inside of your toilet. <laughs> When you start seeing that as a challenge, OK, that's been three days, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I could use the brush, but that's admitting defeat. <laughs> going to get a glass of water, I'm going to fucking reload here. <laughs> I'll be two minutes just trying to get a hard on, get a bit of pressure on this. my first ever yeah, that's that's pretty low when you're trying to take and get the uh, doo doo marks off the inside of the bowl by peeing it away, basically. Try to get your aim real good and yeah, just blast it off like it's a pressure washer. <laughs> My first ever altercation with a friendly madman. Right. It was about midnight. I was standing at a bus stop, waiting on a bus. That's, that's the way I play the game, right? That's how I roll. At the, at the bus stop, waiting on a bus, two people sat beside me. They were doing something similar, and uh, everybody was having a good time. Sounds a bit far-fetched, but it's based on a true story. <laughs> so everyone's there getting their bus stop on when a, a friendly madman showed up. A guy, he was across the road, and he shouted, Oi, you! Oi, you! I, you! <laughs> now, when you're at a bus stop at midnight and somebody instigates a conversation with, Oi, you! Oi, you! I, you! You kind of shite yourself. <laughs> and you, you try and keep your head down, right? And then the guy shouts, Hoy, fat boy, <laughs> fatty. <laughs> and while well, I'm standing there and I'm looking at the two people, <laughs> I'm <laughs> trying to figure out their BMI. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Trying to figure out their BMI. Are these are these fools fatter than I am? Oh my lord! <laughs> Looking at the two people, oh. <laughs> trying to figure out their BMI. And, uh, <laughs> Cause one of us is about to become a statistic, right? But beside me were just these two big skinny pensioner types. Oh, <laughs> cool, this one must be for me. <laughs> and the guy said, fat boy, give me a quid or you're getting stabbed. <laughs> I thought, a quid? That was quite reasonable. <laughs> panic over. I mean, I've never been stabbed, right, but I can imagine it'd be somewhat inconvenient. Maybe even put a dampener on your evening, right, you'd be covered in blood, you'd need to go to a hospital to get stitches, you'd be physically and emotionally traumatised. And here, we've got a gentleman <laughs> offering me the chance to bypass such a horrendous ordeal <laughs> in this current financial climate <laughs> for a mere pound. <laughs> now I'm a sucker for a bargain. So. <laughs> and Edinburgh, you're talking at least a fiver, aren't you? <laughs>
this a historical time, uh, a referendum on Scottish independence. We've got the Yes campaign, we've got the Better Together campaign, and we don't have the, we don't have the fuck it, it'll be a good laugh campaign. <laughs> There's a lot of negatives. I think it could be a laugh. I mean, an idea of Scotland being a proper foreign country. I mean, we could just start messing about with the time zones and stuff like that. <laughs> 9 a.m. every Friday, the clocks go forward for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> we could stop us. It's our country. 9 p.m. Sunday night, they go back for eight hours. <laughs> A foreign country, we could get our own plug sockets. <laughs> a big, a big six pronger, a big, <laughs> a big hideous monstrosity, a Scottish plug socket. It doubles up. I'm really hoping this doesn't get blocked. This dude is hilarious. Oh my god! Like, regardless of whether or not it does get blocked, I'm having a good time. Whether or not y'all get to see it. I hope you do. <laughs> Stop is a violent weapon. <laughs> That's how we kickstart the economy. We sell plug sockets at the airports. <laughs> International arrivals. You got your plug socket, mate? No, that's three prongs. That's an English plug socket. That's <laughs> is a Scottish plug socket. Is it for an electrical appliance or self-defence or? <laughs> <laughs> Concerns. Obviously, the economic argument: uh, an independent Scotland will not be allowed to enter into a currency union with the UK. And we've been told that. And we could maybe start our own money. I, mean, I, was, I was getting fed up with the pound. Anyway, the sterling. Who even calls it the pound? It's a quid or a smack of rooney. That could be. That could be the currency. How hard is it to start your own currency? A smack of rooney. That could be it. Well, you could be in a recession. If your currency is this macaroni, but never a depression. It would cheer you up. <laughs> I'm doing my last five macaronis. <laughs> <laughs> you could rack up a crippling debt. The International Monetary Fund could announce the independent nation of Scotland is running at a 200 billion macaroni deficit. <laughs> Just use it as a deflection tactic. What was that, mate? 200 billion what? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I bet you wish you used this macaroni, eh? <laughs> You'll fucking get your money, mate. You know, that would make it sound a whole lot cooler, regardless of whether or not you're broke. Smackaroonie? It'd be, at the, at the very least, you know, a country has money called that. It, somebody be thank you yanking their chain. Have we got tourists in? It is Edinburgh. Edinburgh Festival was a big tourist. <laughs> a bit of travelling. Have we got tourists in? It is Edinburgh. Edinburgh Festival was a big tourist magnet. Where's the, where's the visitors? Who have we got? Hey, big guy there. Who cheered? Where are you from? Glasgow. Glasgow. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> People flocking from all over. <laughs> Anybody from off from Scotland? Inverness. <laughs> Anybody not from Scotland? We've got a guy from Inverness. <laughs> the People's Independent Republic of Inverness. <laughs> who recently won their battle against the Scottish oppressor to form a free state. <laughs> Well, we're getting excited about that in Scotland. Independence, the referendum. We're letting, uh, we're letting 16 year olds vote. That'll, that'll secure a record number of spoilt ballot papers. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon loves the Bobby. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, we welcome. We welcome the tourists. I've done a bit of travelling. I was in New York. I, I was in America for a week. I went over there. And it's, you don't realise. In the modern day technology, how much shite you take photographs of until you go somewhere worth photographing. I was in New York standing on top of the Empire State Building deleting fry ups. <laughs> <laughs> what means more to me? Ground Zero or that night I made fajitas? <laughs> it's been 12 years and they were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I went into a clove shop in New York called Abercrombie and Fitch. You been there? Glasgow guy. 
Have you been there? <laughs> no. I never knew it was that kind of shop. It's for the beautiful people, the staff. <laughs> I don't mean that as a slant on you. <laughs> Yes, the, the women staff, female staff are beautiful. The guys, the male staff are topless. That's the thing. These guys, they're ripped. They've got six packs. They're stunning. I, I, I... Too bad it's not the other way around. You know, even if the guys do look good, they've got the shirts on, but the women are topless. That seems more appropriate. Oh wait, they've got stuff like that, but that costs cover charges and stuff. These, the male staff are topless. That's the thing. These guys, they're ripped. They've got six packs. They're stunning. Right? Ad Adonis looking guys. Right? I'm talking Peter Andre, mysterious girl video kind of guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, can I help you, sir? And I'm straight, but I was blushing when he talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, can I help you, sir? And I thought it would be quite funny. He said, oh, I'm just here to hand in my CV. <laughs> I got talking to the Abercrombie and Fitch guy. I told him I was a soccer fan. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you guys take soccer pretty serious, huh? And he said, uh, is it true uh, that on soccer day in Scotland, that if you walk into the wrong bar and the other team's fans recognize you, and you're from the other side, that the mean guy walks up to you and he grabs you by the ears <laughs> and he sucks on your eyeball? <laughs> No, it would break my heart to deny that. <laughs> I said, oh, tragic, mate, that that still goes on, 2013. <laughs> Old firm game, everybody's sitting there with monocles in. Just sitting. <laughs> in the pub beforehand, get him, Kenny. <laughs> oh, he's got contact lenses, the Fenian bastard. <laughs> We're kind of over football in Scotland, but a tennis country, aren't we? Andy Murray, this year. Yeah, listen to the enthusiasm in the room. That's an achievement in itself, getting Scottish people into tennis. You can walk into mental pubs in Scotland and see guys like that sitting arguing <laughs> with the ATP master. <laughs> you're going to sit there, Dale, and you're going to tell me now Bandian would beat Djokovic on clay. Nah, you're a moron, mate. You're a moron. <laughs> Pubs up, signs saying no tennis calls. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> Pubs up, signs saying no tennis calls. <laughs> I remember watching a Danny Dyer documentary about the old firm. And it was good to see somebody like him. Danny Dyer, he, he's the prick's prick, isn't he? <laughs> To see him, not some nights you just flick through the channels and you see he's on Britain's most deadliest men, him talking to some big wall puncher. Guy's gonna, <laughs> I'm the kind of bloke, if, if you don't mess with me, I'll be alright, but if you mess with me, I'll, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> Danny Dyer's gonna, can I be your friend? <laughs> done a special on football rivalries and he was outside Ibrooks in the morning of an old firm game and he's talking to the camera this guy made me laugh he's going he's going Celtic and the Catholics and Rangers and the Protestants I'm outside the stadium on old firm day one of football's most deadliest rivalries I'm here outside the stadium on match day and I'm not afraid to say I am fucking shaking <laughs> There's people walking behind them, just waving at the camera, going... <laughs> it was like half ten on a Sunday morning. He's <laughs> going, I'm a fucking tough bloke. I've seen some stuff, but today, I'm fucking petrified. <laughs> a guy walks behind him with a bacon roll and a cup of tea. <laughs> he says, come on, the Rangers. He's going, it's fucking kicked off now. <laughs> I'm clueless. I'm gonna have to look this fella up that he's talking about. He says, Come on, Rangers. He's got his fucking kicked off now. <laughs> the 
the Apollo, eh? It's good to be here in, in London. Have we got any other Scottish people in the room? Up on the top deck, good stuff, that's where we keep them. I love Scottish people <laughs> in London. I love speaking to Scottish people in London. They don't want to tell you about any of the sites or tourist attractions. They don't want to talk about any shows they've seen. They just say, guess how much? <laughs> guess how much we paid for two drinks? Have a guess. <laughs> two drinks, guess how much? You know when somebody... <laughs> that sounds like a country boy that goes to a bar in the city. <laughs> guess how much I paid for two Jack and Cokes? You'll never guess. Much. <laughs> guess how much we paid for two drinks? Have a guess. <laughs> two drinks, guess how much? You know when somebody says to you, guess how much we paid in an irate tone, social etiquette is to aim kind of low. <laughs> so they can have a little moment of shocking you. <laughs> now what I've done, I now aim high. Kill the conversation stone dead. Oh, that's mean. Next time somebody <laughs> says to you, guess how much we paid for two drinks? Just say, I don't know how much, 40 quid. <laughs> Everybody watches that. Oh. We thought it was quite expensive, but it sounds as if... <laughs> sounds as if we got a bargain. <laughs> I bought these discs, you put them on your iPod, she teaches you about bit of Spanish, the voice. I can now say things in Spanish. Well, 40 quid, or 40 dollars for two drinks is basically two shots of some high-end, uh... stuff around here, like, they've got the, uh, well... Depending on what it is, like, you get the like the top of the line, like the Crown Royal, like XR, like the $150 bottle of stuff, like you get a shot of that. That could be like $15 just for one shot. Crazy. They get way more than what the hell that bottle's worth in a shot. I promise you. That Spanish people can say in English. That's the, <laughs> that's the level I'm at. I've got the tourist stuff. Everywhere you go as a tourist, people speak English. But when you've got a Scottish accent, that's very little help. I've... <laughs> I've run holidays, and I've had people translate for me into English. <laughs> and you walk into a pub and say, are you still serving food? Uh, que? <laughs> oh, he asked you, are you still serving food? <laughs> ah, si, si, si. <laughs> you get that shit. I was in America. I was I done a gig in America in New York and after the gig a guy said he said to me, Hey, 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 hey buddy, uh, are you actually Scottish? <laughs> and I said, Yes. And he said, Man, your English is really good. <laughs> I got these discs. The best I've got Una Mesa para cuatro, por favor. I've got tourist stuff. Can I nail two it? Stuff you need on holiday. Like, that means a table for four, please. She says it a few times. She says, Una mesa para cuatro, por favor. A table for four, please. <laughs> and she leaves a beat and goes again, in case you're a moron. <laughs> Una mesa para cuatro, por favor. A table for four, please. <laughs> Says it three and four times, and you, you start drifting off and just imagining how many people have been found dead listening to these discs. <laughs> That's a suicide note wrote in broken Spanish. Just... <laughs> it all got two muchas. <laughs> <laughs> Una mesa, <laughs> cuatro, por favor. A table for four. That's crucial knowledge. Because I know that when me and three associates, when we walk in to a restaurant in Spain, I can tell the head waiter is looking at us and thinking, well, I wonder what these guys want. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm on hand to defuse the situation. <laughs> I have been thoroughly briefed. I step forward and say, una mesa. <laughs> Para cuatro, por favor. 
and we get sat at the table for four. Guy brings the menus in Spanish and I crumble. <laughs> Everybody else is losing their minds going, what the f... What's a hamburger, eh, sir? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And there we have it. Kevin Bridges stayed at Best of the Apollo, the Comedy Roadshow, and the Edinburgh Comedy Festival. Oh, this cat is hilarious. I, I've got to take an up. The amount of storage I can get for my Dropbox. So that way I can put the reaction to his uh, Married Man's Night Out bit for the members. Because that had me rolling. This was a lot longer, so I had a lot more rolling to be doing on this one. But this, this cat right here, is he's hilarious. So... Thank you for watching. Thank you for the recommendations. I'm going to get to more of the comedians that y'all have recommended to me. Y'all be good to each other and love yourselves. Peace.